Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are gonna be doing a full face of high-end makeup you hate. So last month I did the drugstore version of this video and that was a lot of fun. It was really fun to be able to see your insights and why you didn't like certain products because makeup is so like trial and error. Everything works differently for everybody. So a lot of you guys liked that and you wanted me to do the high-end version. So here we are. When I was going through Instagram and looking through all of your responses, which by the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you definitely should. It is Juicy Jazz Official. Come say hi. When I was looking through your responses, I tried to pick products that I haven't used in a while and things that were also brand new to me because I'm not too hip when it comes to new high-end makeup. You guys know I'm definitely a drugstore makeup kind of gal. So I loved seeing all your responses. I did a little bit of shopping at Sephora and I also did some shopping in my own makeup collection and found some of these high-end makeup products that you guys did not like. So we're just gonna get into it. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you grab a snack, subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and let's get into a full face of high-end makeup you hate. So for eyeshadow palette, today I have the Natasha Denona bronze palette so a lot of you guys said Natasha Denona palettes in general you said that they're overhyped especially for the price I've never tried this palette I've only tried one palette from Natasha Denona and honestly I wasn't really too impressed I feel like in my opinion from what I did try the shadows I agree with you they're definitely overpriced overhyped and I feel like you can get these kind of colors and stuff in ColourPop palettes BH Cosmetics palettes like so many other more affordable palettes in my opinion but one of you guys actually specifically said you didn't like this because you feel like you can create the same look over and over again with the colors so there isn't a ton of variety I can kind of see that like a lot of these shimmers do look the same like this looks kind of just like this just a little bit lighter these two colors look the same so I can kind of see what you mean there but let's test it out so I'm gonna start off with the color down here called beach I'm gonna use that as my transition color wow that color is like pretty pigmented it's actually a lot darker than what I thought it was gonna be. Like in the pan, that color looks pretty light. I feel like nowadays it's not really necessary to spend 65 or like even more than that on eyeshadow palettes because like ColourPop exists, you know what I mean? Like they have so many beautiful palettes, really great quality, really great prices. Then I'm gonna go into this color right here called Suntan. Gonna kind of put that a little bit right on the outer crease. To be honest, Natasha Denona was definitely the most popular eyeshadow brand that you guys mentioned. A couple people also mentioned Tarte eyeshadows as well. I've tried Tarte eyeshadows in the past and I feel like all of their palettes, they're not really consistent. Some of them are better than others, but I haven't used those in forever. But I don't think that they are the best eyeshadows though, honestly. The colors seem to be pretty <laughs> pigmented. <laughs> Tongue twister. I'm like still trying to get back in the groove this week with like filming and everything. So I feel like I'm stuttering so much in my videos. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of edits, a lot of cuts in my videos that you guys don't see. And I'm gonna go into this color right here and I'm gonna apply that on my lid. You guys know I love to match like my makeup with what I'm wearing. So I'm gonna dip first and without spraying just to see how it looks. But I feel like spraying the brush always just makes the biggest difference and it's so necessary so I'm gonna spray right now I'm not really getting like that wow factor from this color there's also some fallout in this palette as you can see which I feel like that happens with all of my eyeshadows, but I figured I would just mention that. I feel like this is not really that impressive for this to be a $65 palette, in my opinion. I just wiped away the fallout, by the way, but so I'm not super impressed with it, but it's not terrible, but again, it's a $65 palette, so I guess I gotta be a little bit more harsh with it because it's not like it's like an affordable like $10 or $12 palette. But anyways, I'm gonna go into this color right here called Deep Dive. And I'm just gonna put that right on the outer corner a little bit i do like these tones though i will say i think based on what i did use today the mattes are a little bit better than the shimmers for sure that color is definitely a lot more pigmented than the shade that i applied on the lid so i think maybe it's just that color that i used specifically it's just not 
incredibly pigmented or shimmery, but I think that's just like the finish of the shadow in general. There is definitely fallout though, so if that bothers you, something to keep in mind. I always say it never bothers me because I always do my eye makeup first for that reason. I literally have fallout on my chin, okay. <laughs> I'm also very heavy handed, you guys know that, so it might not happen to you as well, but I always like to mention it. I will say I wish that there were more mattes than shimmers in here, honestly. I feel like there's a lot of like the same shimmers. For eyeliner, I have the Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Liner. I think I tried this before, but I honestly, I don't really remember. A couple of you guys said that this does not last all day and you don't love the formula of it. I'm gonna do a wing. The applicator, like it's super black, but the actual like applicator felt tip isn't super like flexible. It's a little stiff when you're working with it. So that's why that wing looks like that. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I don't want it to be too thick. I always say that and then it ends up being so thick. Yeah, it's really difficult to do a wing with this because the felt tip isn't really like super like flexible. Okay, so I kind of fixed the wings a little bit. I think the formula of this is really nice. I like how black it is. It seems to be drying down really matte too, which is nice. I just don't like the actual felt tip. I feel like it's a little bit difficult to work with. If you want to do a thin line, it works, but for winged liner, I don't think this is the best liner. For mascara, two of the most popular responses was the Too Faced Born This Way Better Than Sex mascara. I don't really love that mascara. I feel like it's very clumpy and a lot of you guys agree. And then the Milk Makeup Cush mascara was another super popular mascara. So a lot of you guys like this, but you mentioned that it flakes throughout the day and it runs. I haven't used this mascara in quite some time, so I guess we'll see how it lasts later on when I do the lower lashes. I feel like I never have an issue with my top lashes, usually the lower. I did a full face of milk makeup last year. I was going to say a few months ago, but it was literally last year already crazy. So I honestly didn't get any like lash recommendations for you guys that you didn't like. So I'm going to go in with these Lily lashes. These are the faux mink in the style Mykonos. So I've tried Lily lashes before. You can get them at Ulta or online. I think that they're nice lashes for sure. They actually sent these to me, which I was very surprised to get PR from Lily lashes. But I think that they're nice lashes, but I think there's a lot of really great drugstore options. Like I said, with everything, there's drugstore dupes for, I feel like for everything. But lashes is one of those things where I don't typically spend a ton of money on really expensive lashes anymore because again I feel like I can get that same effect with Kiss Lashes, Ilure, Salon Perfect, but these are really pretty. I don't think I've tried the style Mykonos. I have tried the style Miami, um, but I'm going to test these out today and see how they look with this look. These kind of look like Kiss Lashes in the style Teddy. They look very, very similar. Yeah, these are pretty, really dramatic very extra like me. So yeah, I'm gonna pop these on and then we will do face. We have some very interesting products for the face. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I actually didn't use the Mika Nose lashes. I put them on and I wasn't crazy about how they looked with this look. I felt like they were a little too much. So I used the Faux Minx from Lily Lashes in the style Miami instead. Anyways, let's move into the skin. So the most popular, obviously everything that I'm talking about is like the most popular, but this was definitely like the most popular primer. It's the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. I have I've talked and raved about this primer before. I really like it, but Hard Candy has an exact dupe for this that I think is better. The reason a lot of you guys didn't like it, you mentioned that it balls up whenever you use any foundation with it. I feel like with this primer, certain foundations for me don't work with it. Not all of them, but certain ones. They'll like kind of ball up and flake on the skin. But it is a nice primer, like the way that it feels. It does make your makeup last. But again, Hard Candy has one that's like, I think nine or $10 and it's like identical to this. But I like it more because it doesn't break me out, doesn't ball up on my skin, and it's a little bit more hydrating. So with my skin, I like it a little bit more. For foundation, I'm gonna go in with the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. So many of you guys said that this is so cakey, you hate the way it looks on the skin. This actually used to be one of my favorite foundations a few years ago when it first launched. But I feel like my skin was a lot more oily then. I definitely now prefer the hydrating one, but I haven't used this one in a little bit. Honestly, I don't remember the last time that I used this foundation, but I love hydrating foundations on my skin. I think it makes it look healthier, more fresh. From what I can remember though, this foundation is definitely matte, and a lot of you guys just hate how thick and cakey it is. I'm gonna use my Haley's Beauty sponge. I think that is a good match. It's kind of yellowy, but I think we can make it work. 
I'm gonna use a little bit more because I got some little pimples here. It's gonna be that time of the month. Definitely did cover up, which is good. Yeah, I love the hydrating foundation from Fenty. That's literally one of my go-tos. I think it's so pretty and so fresh. A couple of people actually commented about that one and you said that it's too dewy on your skin. For me, I don't think it's that dewy, but again, different products work differently on everybody. It is definitely more dewy than this one. Like this is for sure a matte foundation. When I was in college, this used to be like one of my go-to like going out foundations just because it does look really nice in pictures. I feel like most of Fenty products do. And I liked the matte finish for like going out and stuff. But I just love a good hydrating foundation more. I'm actually surprised this doesn't feel more matte on my skin. I mean, I'm sure the Milk Makeup primer helped because that one is hydrating a bit more on the forehead and then i think we'll be good so i did about two pumps of this it actually feels comfortable on the skin which i was a little bit nervous to use this foundation because i thought it was going to be way too drying and i thought that with the milk primer it would like flake or crumble but it actually looks really good for concealer i'm going to go with the tarte shape tape this i'm a little bit nervous about i don't like this concealer you guys anymore when it first came out i feel like it was like amazing and i loved the coverage of it because i feel like this was like the big like full coverage concealer in the makeup industry and then so many other brands started coming out with i feel like better formulas and like the same amount of coverage with the concealer so for me i feel like this is a little bit too drying for my under eyes i have a lot of fine lines under here so i normally again like something a little bit more hydrating and more creamy and I feel like with this it's the complete opposite it has great coverage but it's not very hydrating under the eyes it's definitely matte and I feel like now that there's so many other brands and so many other great formulas I feel like this is definitely overhyped at least in my opinion so I agree with you guys another concealer that you guys mentioned that was also very dry is this one from Hourglass this is the Vanish concealer in the shade Oat I don't hate this concealer I think this is really good so I'm going to use both of these today because I feel like this one's going to be a little bit too light this one's light too but it's like not as light as a Tarte I think I'm gonna do a little mixing action here today. And this one from Tarte, I have, again, too light for me, but it's in the shade 22N Light Neutral. Let's actually do one eye at a time because this is a really dry concealer. Yeah, this gets very, very cakey under my eyes these days. Like it definitely works, but I feel like for me, it's not an ideal concealer because it accentuates all of my imperfections under there. It doesn't look too bad because the concealer will balance everything out because the foundation is a little bit too dark. I will say the Hourglass Concealer is a lot more creamy than this one and I feel like the coverage is really nice, at least in my opinion, because a lot of you guys also did not like this one. You said it was like really, like it made your under eyes look very like creasy. I'm gonna use the hourglass one just to highlight. I like the applicator on this one too. You see how creamy that is? Yeah, I definitely prefer the hourglass one over Tarte Shape Tape. So I feel like with Tarte Shape Tape, it's either you love it or you hate it because the formula definitely is matte. And I feel like the hourglass concealer is also more on the matte side, but again, it's a lot more creamier than Tarte Shape Tape, at least for my under eyes. So now for cream blush, I have this one from Rare Beauty. And it's funny because I literally just talked about these in my yearly favorites. I love the Rare Beauty liquid blushes. The shade Bliss is my fave. It's like an everyday pinky color. One of you guys in particular said that you do one dot on your face and you just can't blend it out. So I'm gonna do that, which I feel like is honestly all that you need, by the way, because this is such a pigmented liquid blush. I'm gonna go in with my 125 face brush from Fenty. I personally feel like this brush is magic and it works with any cream product because I can't even tell you like how many bad experiences I've had with cream products, but this brush always comes through and I just feel like it gives you the most effortless, beautiful look. And it's because of this brush. Cause I feel like if I were to use a different brush, maybe it wouldn't blend out as seamlessly. And it just really like melts products into your skin seamlessly. For powder, I'm so excited about the one size translucent powder. So you guys mentioned this is a very drying powder. I've never used this before. So I'm excited to test it out. I love the packaging by the way. This is a Patrick Starr's brand, by the way, for those of you who don't know, but this is beautiful. I love like the pink in red it's so cute reminds me of valentine's day it's a super fine 14 hour long wear blurring setting powder made for a light bake to a heavy cake cute um it says dust with a powder brush and bake with a puff for a soft matte finish with no flashback so i'm going to use this brush from bh cosmetics and nazanin kabari i'm going to just press that powder under there and i'll test it out and see if there's a white cast I'm 
gonna set my entire face with this because it does say it's translucent. And this brush is from Hourglass. It's really expensive. Honestly, I'm only using it because they sent it to me because I think it's like a $70 brush. Totally unnecessary, but I have it, so I'm going to use it. So first impressions, I actually really like the powder. I think it looks really nice. It's very soft. It doesn't feel overly drying on my skin, which is actually really surprising considering I used a matte foundation and a matte concealer. For bronzer, I'm going to go in with the Marc Jacobs Omega Bronzer, another product that I really haven't used in a little bit. It's kind of one of those things that I just have in my collection and I just don't reach for it that often. A couple of you guys said that this is just way too overhyped and way too expensive, and I agree. It's a nice bronzer. I do like the color, but again, I just don't reach for it that often because I feel like there's a lot of really great bronzers out there. Honestly, if I had to choose one high-end bronzer, it would be my Fenty one over this one. I feel like the color is a little bit better. I love the shade range. But I do like this color though. It definitely, you know, it's a bronzer. It works, but it's expensive. Gotta clean off the foundation and powder off the earrings. It happens every single time. By the way, my jewelry, I've been like nonstop wearing these pieces from Miranda Fry Jewelry. Earrings and the necklaces from there. I love it. I have them in gold as well. They're like my staple, like go-to pieces. I think they're so pretty. So check them out. I will link them for you guys. And I also do have a coupon code. If you use code, I believe it's Juicy Jazz, you get $10 off and free US shipping. So I'll leave that down below for you guys. For blush, I have the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in Mood Exposure. I will be honest, this color, when I got it, I was like, oh, this doesn't really look like that great. I mean, it kind of doesn't match what I'm wearing, but these are normally not the colors that I go to. One of you guys said that you were disappointed in the size of this and like the color payoff. It is a very small little blush for the price, but what's for me a little bit disappointing is this color. I thought it was going to be a little bit different. There doesn't seem to be a ton of pigment. And plus I have that Rare Beauty liquid blush. So I feel like it's gonna be kind of hard to see the true color. But a lot of people actually, I was looking at the reviews, they really liked this color. I feel like you really have to dig your brush in to get some color payoff. I just feel like this is so tiny for like <laughs> such an expensive price. This is probably for me something that I would definitely pass on. For highlighter, actually I didn't get honestly a ton of highlighter recommendations from you guys of things that you didn't like. So this is what I decided to choose for this video. This is the Huda Beauty 3D Highlighter Palette. The reason I'm including this in here is because I don't really see the hype with this palette. It's not only really expensive, but it's pretty average quality colors. Like you can get colors like this anywhere nowadays, like other high-end brands, other drugstore brands. So it's not really like a life-changing palette for that price point so it's not something that I hate that doesn't work it's just not something that I think is worth the money but we're gonna use it today so I'm gonna take the golden color which is called Azores in Santorini and I'm just gonna pop that right on the cheekbones it also doesn't come with a mirror which I know that's kind of like me being picky but I feel like if drugstore palettes can come out with mirrors then high-end palettes should have mirrors they're just convenient they're nice to have again it's me being picky it's not a big deal but just an observation my hair literally looks like it's uneven right now but it's not I actually need to get a haircut again because I love when I get a fresh cut and it's so short and I feel like my hair has been growing so fast I know it's like first world problems I don't know how to stop it but my hair grows so incredibly flaccid, I feel like I need a haircut like once a month. I'm not even kidding. I am gonna take the color Santorini in here and I'm gonna just apply that in the inner corner. There's a lot of dupes for this palette too in particular. I actually did a dupes video and I featured this palette back in the summer and there's a dupe from C Color Cosmetics that's like very, very similar and it's like literally like, I think $10 or something. Okay, for my lower lashes, I'm gonna go in with the bronze palette again and I think I'm just gonna use this color under here and this color. And then for the waterline, I have a liner that I'm not too crazy about. It's the Makeup by Mario Master Pigment Pro Pencil in the Perfect Brown. This is a really creamy liner and I love the, like the shade is truly like a perfect brown. It just does not last all day on the waterline. 
So I definitely prefer the Urban Decay 24-7 pencils. I love the color. I just wish the formula was a little bit more long wearing. I'm gonna do some lower lash mascara. This wand is really big though. I feel like it's not like ideal for the lower lashes because it is so big. All right, we are almost done with this look. Lips and setting spray. So for lips, I have the Patrick Ta Precision Lip Crown. And this one I have in the color Oh She's Single. One of you guys mentioned that you hate the packaging on this. It's like really awkward and it is like it's different instead of like twisting it up you like click on it and it's kind of like an angled lip pencil which I've never seen before normally lip pencils are like traditional but this kind of looks like a brow definer like for your eyebrows I really don't spend a lot of money on lip pencils I literally just did it for this video because a lot of them are just so good at the drugstore okay this broke yeah the shape is very awkward Nice color, but not crazy about this packaging. I think they tried to make the shape like, so it's easier for you to line your lips and I think it's diff more difficult. It's just this weird packaging that's just really throwing me off. So I can see why you don't like that. And then for liquid lips, Anastasia Beverly Hills. This one is the naked liquid lipstick. So a couple of you guys said that you either think that they're too drying or basically just like ColourPop liquid lipsticks, but like repackaged to Anastasia. I love ColourPop liquid lipsticks. I think they're like six or seven bucks. Those are so good, but I haven't tried this color out. So let's try it out. Okay, that's really nude. Just take a flat little concealer brush and just blend that in. Definitely need a gloss over top because it's like it emphasizes the lines on your lips, which I feel like most liquid lipsticks do. The lips for me are probably my least favorite thing in today's video. I'm already getting a line right here and I haven't even had the liquid lipstick on for like not even a minute. Like I cannot line my lips. Like sometimes my lips do look a little jagged, but this, this is not okay. It looks awful. All right, I'm gonna take this off. This looks ridiculous. I just use my Milani understatement lip pencil. Okay, for lipstick, I'm just gonna use the Artist Couture lipstick in Saucy Gal. I love this. It's like one of my favorite high-end lipstick. And then I'm gonna use the Makeup by Mario Pro Volume Lip Gloss in Golden Nude. So now for setting spray, I'm nervous about this because so many people warned me that this is so incredibly strong. And this is the Resting Boss Face Waterproof Setting Spray Ultra Matte Finish from Huda Beauty. I'm pretty sure I watched videos when this first came out of people like doing a first impressions on it and it wasn't a good spray. So I'm kind of nervous. Oh, oh. <laughs> Ay Dios mio, that is very, very strong. Oh, is my lash coming off? Cause I squeezed my eyes so hard. Yeah, it is. This smells like an entire bottle of perfume. I kind of figured that was gonna happen though. You guys warned me that it's so, so incredibly strong. Wow, okay. That was, that was fun. <laughs> okay, so believe it or not, we finally made it to the end of this video, you guys. To close off the video and end on a positive note, I have to say, even though a lot of these products were duds for me and I did not like them, I do like the overall look. I think this is really cute. I like the way it turned out. I like how everything like matches what I'm wearing. But wow, some of these products are not good and it goes to show like just because something is expensive doesn't mean it's always gonna be really good or better than something that's cheaper. So for the most part, I feel like I was able to make a lot of the things work, but I do do have a couple standout products in here that I do not like and that I definitely do not think are worth the money and that I agree with you guys. So first we have Natasha Denona bronze palette. I feel like you can get so many palettes like this that are so much more affordable. Honestly, even better quality because I'm not really too impressed with the quality of this palette for this to be $65. This setting spray, like this is terrible. Like I don't know anybody who would like the scent of this. This is not only so strong, but it's so matte on the face. My face feels so matte and so tight right now. I'm just not a fan of this. Like even besides the fact that it's matte, like I said, it is so aggressive when you spray. It feels like an entire bottle of perfume is just being splashed all over your face. Okay, this hourglass blush, I'm gonna keep using it because I feel like I didn't give it a completely fair shot today because I did use it over top of a liquid blush, but like just looking at this, it's kind of like meh. Like when you touch it, I feel like it doesn't feel as expensive as what this actually is. These lip products, I have to say, I don't really say the word hate that often. I don't think that I do when it comes to makeup, but I hate these 
these lip products and this lip liner especially this is terrible it breaks so easily it's so dry this is just bad so for me this is a hard pass this liquid lipstick from Anastasia today was so incredibly drying like I don't remember these being this drying but wow this is drying Tarte Shape Tape honestly I'm over it I can't love this concealer like no matter what I do it's just too drying on my skin these days and then this Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Liner I like the formula it's super black I hate the felt tip this Huda Beauty Highlighter Palette I know you guys didn't recommend it but I included it in today's video pass on it but the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer surprisingly worked well with the Fenty foundation today and I thought the Fenty foundation was going to be a lot more drying and feel like super cakey and heavy but it actually doesn't feel bad my face feels a lot more dry now after spraying it with this spray versus before I did that so just a little FYI there I also do like this one size powder this felt really nice before I sprayed my makeup again <laughs> I did take two photos of flash one is here in the beauty room with the studio lights and the other one is in the hallway in the house with no lights at all and you can see it doesn't look okay first of all the pictures are not cute <laughs> but it doesn't look completely flawless but it doesn't look completely terrible I've definitely had worse so I'm going to keep using this powder with some of my other favorite products and I think it'll look a lot better and then for that person out there who said you cannot blend out this rare beauty blush I'm telling you you have to splurge and you have to get this 125 face brush because it's incredible the combo together is everything this brush will solve all of your cream makeup product problems. <laughs> so that is officially it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there's any other products that are expensive that you guys do not like that maybe are overhyped or that you just don't think are worth the money, let me know down below in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And of course, no hard feelings. If you guys like these products, that's totally fine. Makeup is not going to work for everybody. It is not going to be universal for everybody. Like you might love products that I don't like and I might recommend something to you that might not work and that's totally fine because that's just the beauty of makeup. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!